You are watching GBS TV and this is the most exciting art club show. I hope you're doing okay. So much has been going on, but I hope your week has been good. We have an amazing guest here today. We have so much to talk about people. We have art, we have paintings, we have um, so much motivation for you today, people. And I hope you will enjoy and stay tuned. You can also catch us on all our social medias at uh, GBS TV Africa and also text us on our SMS line at 21144. And you know, Catch us up, people. Um, stay with us, and we will have we have so much in store. We have so many exciting um, stories. We have such a wonderful guest here, and he has so much to share with you. I feel like you will be inspired. You will be, um, you know, you will be happy, guys. There's so much to share. You'll get to know more about. You will get to know what is. What is the story of this art? Um, what is the story of this artist that we have here today? Um, you know, what is the story of the art? What makes them draw? What makes them paint the way they paint? What makes them who they are? So I hope that you will stay tuned, guys, and, you know, catch up. Thank you so much. Everywhere, GBS. Hey there, good people, and we are back. Again, you are watching GBS TV Africa, and this is the amazing Art Club show. And I am joined in studio today by an amazing, amazing artist. He is something else people i love how he draws i love how he paints uh he has such a significant like uh wording and and there's something about his paintings that just you would know it's him who did his work in artistry right now you need to be able to pinpoint what makes an artist um defined what makes an artist different and i feel like we really do have that today and i cannot wait to introduce you to this amazing artist i have some paintings of his um behind me they're so pretty they're so beautiful they just talk about African and what it is to be an African woman, what it is to have African features, and I really, really love that. Thank you so much for being here today. Patrick Mukabi, you're welcome to the Art Club show. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. You're and welcome. Thank you for having me here. You're welcome. <coughs> yeah. I'm so happy to uh, finally meet you. Okay. I've checked out a lot of your work, and I think it's just so inspiring what you do with children, mm -hmm. with um, different artists. Mm -hmm. um, your art really speaks a lot for itself. Thank um, you. Just Thank you very let much. me just, even if I've already <laughs> said your name, but let me allow you to introduce mm -hmm. yourself. So they call me Patrick Mukabi. I've um, been a painter for the last 24 years. Um, I came out of graphic design and then I just came to find out. Oh, okay. I felt um, fine art, I can express myself more. Graphic was more for business. Yeah. You have to work with the client. Yeah. But when I'm doing fine art, 
I can just play around with my own stories and hope people can understand them. Yeah. Mm. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so is there really a difference between, you feel like graphic designing is more, you need to be more in touch with the people you're working for, yes. the people you're helping. In graphic design, you get a client, a brief, and then in the process, you try and confuse the client mm. to agree with what you think. <laughs> because the client will always come with their own. Yeah. Like they have three colors, they have two colors you have to maintain. Yeah. And then we want this and that. But also you as a creative, you want to put your own stuff inside. So, yeah. that can, so you manage to, you, you try and confuse the client that what you're saying is what they're saying. So it's, it's, it's sort of, um, you don't want to be in that re restricted box. Yes. Some, that's what uh, graphic design stands yeah, for. Yeah, graphic that. design is like, you have to do that. Yeah. And without that also, it wouldn't have uh, helped me in fine art because I can also use that when mm. somebody commissions me in fine art. True. They're how to handle the client. And you'll find many, client, uh, many artists will say, Apana, this is what I do. They don't know how to work with the client. Yeah. So graphic design told me that. Oh, that's a good mm -hmm. thing because um, I do find where art, an artist will want to do what they want to do yes. because they love it and they mm -hmm. don't want it to be changed by an outside source. Yes. So that's good that you give that allowance at least yeah, for people. You, play, you, you just work with the client. So that's like, good. So you can mirror what they're saying yeah. and then they mirror you and then before you know it, you're actually going in the same direction. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. So where yeah. are you from? I'm from Nairobi. I, grew, I was born in Nairobi. Yeah. Um, I grew up in Nairobi and Mombasa. Born and raised in Nairobi? Yeah, Nairobi and Mombasa. Okay. So half Mombasa, half Nairobi. And the Mombasa, I think people usually say because of the lessos and the kangas I put. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I you actually have a, this yeah. uh, colorful oh, lesso on you right now. <laughs> it's giving me tropical <laughs> vibes. Uh -huh, <laughs> uh, so um, I schooled in Loreto, Mombasa. Yeah. And then Nairobi High School, I went to Aria, and then Isili High School. Okay. Um, I can say Aria is where art really caught on. In Mombasa, the primary school also used to do art in English. Mm -hmm. You draw and then you write a composition. Okay. So it was very exciting to do that class. Okay, that's mm. good. That's good. Um, tell me, uh, did your parents, where, where are your parents from? <laughs> and do you feel like uh, your parents played a part in your art uh, when you were growing up? Because um, I read a bit of uh, an, interview, an interview that you had another time, mm -hmm. and it mentioned that you started your art in a very, very young age. Yes, yes. Uh, you even had the keys to an art room when you got yeah. into high school. Mm -hmm. So did your parents, parents uh, play a part in your art journey and like becoming an artist, or did you see something that your parents did and admired it, or did it just oh. come out of... It's actually, my mom is the one who convinced my dad to give him some capital. Your dad was not having ah, it. Ah, he was like, no way, no way. Yeah, be, uh, mm. you know, there's, um, I feel like artists are one of the greatest people in the universe, mm. but parents feel like you're not going to be able to, like, support yourself. Yes. So they are afraid yes. of us going through yeah, that my dad said, so I to her, you will not even manage to buy a bed, you know. <laughs> yeah. And his family was musical. Yeah. So he had seen how the musicians were leaving and... So I was very worried. Yeah. And that's parent mode. It's, you can't do anything about it. You need parent mode. Yeah, I feel like they mm. usually maybe want just the best for us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But they, and that's you know, sometimes you need to talk to the child. When I'm working with students, maybe you want to give them wine, but yeah. they want water. Yes. So you just talk to the child, and then you see where they are, what direction they want to go. Thank and you. try and push them, promote them. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. um, you've mentioned this, but again, I would just like you to talk about it a bit. You studied art. Yes. And um, was it a calling? Did you feel like art is what I need to do? Or when you were growing up, did you have different things that you said, oh, oh I would love, I would <laughs> try this, I would try this? I think uh, I, I had different ideas. Yeah. Art was one of them. I wanted to be a rally driver because when we used to live in Mombasa. Like safari come, rally? Yes. They used uh. to come and park there overnight. So I said, I want to be a rally driver. Mechanic, of course. And I used to work a lot with mechanics, so I know a bit about the engine yeah. and the cars. And then art was like, yeah, in school, the school I was in, Loreto, yeah. had a lot of images from the Vatican, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. those influences also came from there. Okay. Yeah. That's really so, interesting. So when I... I think even right now, people ask me, are you going to get a job? Mm -hmm. I have a sister who's always asking me that. Well, when are you going to get a job? For, for her, whatever you're doing now is not a uh, job. Yeah, 
yeah. 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 She's thinking, but die, but die. <laughs> yeah. I, mm. It's 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 uh, the way we imagine, especially in Africa, we have this way of not thinking that art can yes. last you, art can fulfill you, mm -hmm, art mm -hmm. can feed you. So I think, uh, yeah, people want to see how much money you can make. How much can you sell? Yeah. Every month, that's the pressure. But it's also a career. It's yeah. just a career like any other one. Yeah, it ha mm. you need to be very, very passionate about it. Kichwangumu. Yeah, Kichwangumu. Because mm. if you are not passionate about it, then you'll never really get to where you want yeah. to get Also, to. in the art industry, you might go in and then you find somebody telling you, no, this is not art. This is art. Okay. You know, like most people tell me, someone has an intro, can you do a portrait? They think all artists do portraits. Yeah. They're those who just play with light, color, shapes and forms. True. And they can express them themselves like that. So yeah. there's that pressure. Um, tell us a little bit about the children's program at uh, Kuona Trust. Oh, with Kuona, um, when, I, when I started painting, I joined Kuona. Yes. And because it was based at the museum and children visit there always, so we started joining in just to earn some extra money. Yeah. But also for me, I learned it was another way to experiment with different materials. Mm. Um, so you're told uh, there are coming 20 children and you get materials for 20 children and then they come 100. Whoa. And then you're told select and you feel like, no, I can't select. So we just work together with all of them and start improvising things around. You yeah. can use soil, you can use ink and bleach, jiki akuchora, oh, use charcoal, so that you include the whole group. So in that process of working with those children, yeah. I started also getting ideas for what I can use in my work. Yeah. And how, also creating my own work. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. long has it been going? How long have you been at this? Um, at painting. Yes. Now it's almost twenty, twenty-four years. So you have, you have, you feel like you know a lot it's, that goes into the it's industry. It's like the fishermen say, "There is no fundi wa bahari." Yeah. Every day you learn something new. True. You can learn from a five-year-old. You can learn from somebody who's eighty, and my students range between that five, eighty-nine. I have one who's eighty-nine. Wow. Yeah. So. Every day you can learn something. You can learn to use a different material. Last, last uh, two, three months ago, Crayola, I learned how to work with Crayola and an iron box, you see. Yeah. I used to see it, but I wasn't like knowing, and somebody came and showed me, you can take Crayola, do this, iron box, and it becomes an art piece. That's nice. Yeah. You, learn, you learn every day. Every day you work, you learn. So the secret is actually working every day. And the um, children's program, mm. how, how long has it been there for? When did it start? The, um, the one on TV, it's been there for now. It's like around four years. Yeah. And then the Kuona one, and now also I still work. Like Friday, I'm working with an international school. Yeah. Um, so it, I've been working with kids, I think, let's say six, seven years. Yes. And then I've been working with um, children's homes also, street kids. Yeah. I have kids now, people who came from the street and now they live in Europe. Just um, because of painting. Um, if I may ask, please, mm -hmm. when you're helping children out with this um, and they're getting into art, mm -hmm. in what way do you, because I know sometimes it's very complicated to get a street child and take them from the street yeah. into like maybe a home where you can start taking care of them and advise them and all of that. Mm -hmm. So what's the process? Um, do you like find people to like help you get these children off the streets and like put Most them? Most of the time people find me. They come yeah. and find me. And if I see somebody who's come all the way looking for me, mm -hmm. I know they are interested. Talent is not important. The interest is more important than the talent. True. I know people with talent, but they are not interested. You just try and they're just there. Yeah. And then somebody who doesn't know anything, interested, and they work and work, and they become somebody because of the interest. Yeah. So these days, people just, even long term, they just used to follow me. Uh, when I was at the National Museum, we would do a class with a visiting children's home or a school. And during the whole day, one or two would come back and say, I want you. Or they would call me later and say, you worked very well with them. Uh, can you come and do some more? Yeah. Um, even, even going abroad, I would work with the school. And just one of the kids, maybe the most quiet one in the corner there, who did something very small. The parent would call me later on and say, the child is talking about you. Yeah. In the way you work with this charcoal, and they are doing it, so come. And I would come, sometimes they move to another country, and they would wow. call me, can you come and teach the teacher here? 
because the kid is saying this teacher is not. So that's how I again end up traveling abroad just like that. Ah, that's amazing. Yeah. So you also get like um, a chance to teach privately sometimes yes, to Yes, I do a lot of private classes, one-on-one, -on -one, tailor-made. Some people just want to come and do the human figure. Yeah. Some people want the whole range from basics. Uh, schools, sometimes the teacher is weak on a certain subject. Yes. And you go and help. Okay. Mm -hmm. Coming into that, actually, um, Just Depot Artist Studio, um, what is it about? Um, what is in there? Is it that you um, give opportunity for different artists to come and like um, show their art there? What's there? Tell us uh, a bit about that's it. That Depot is actually a safe space for artists. Yeah. It's open. And if somebody feels they have the urge to paint, to draw, and they want just to um, mix with the artist. Is there a late it's open. age limit? No. Okay. There's no age limit. Uh, of course, small ones are a bit uh, hard, but from around six, seven years old, they can mix in. Mm. And then we even have grown-ups. Yeah, because um, there's grown-ups, but they who would love to like, yeah, know, learn have, painting. Retired people, people changing careers. Uh, we have a 22-year-old who's got a family mm -hmm. and a 28-year-old who thinks he's still a teenager. Yes. And hopefully they can mix together and learn that, oh, this is also a career. Yeah. yeah. Somebody can play around with the art, but somebody else is earning a living. You see? Yeah. In school, you can experiment, make mistakes. You just get bad marks. True. But in real life, when you come to the studio, you see that it can actually be life and death. You can be hungry or you can actually make money from being serious with art. And wh where is the studio, please? So the studio right now, it's at um, Karen Village. Uh, we have a, we've been there for the last one and a half years. Okay. Uh, but before that, we were at railway. It's only the pandemic we closed down. Yeah. And opened a year ago. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. The co I bet Corona must have hit. Yeah. Corona was another again, uh, another wake up call. Yeah. And the networks we built throughout the years is what actually made us go to most mm -hmm. of the things. There were people writing from U.S., somebody I met maybe two weeks in the U.S., mm. and gave us some money just for people to buy food. Yeah. There are people I met for one hour, and we communicated, and business went through. But the networks made us go through. Yeah. And then just learning new things, you know, like online, online marketing, which, which I wasn't very good at. Mm -hmm. I know people in my generation, some of them even don't know what Facebook is. True. At, at WhatsApp. True. And you tell them, oh, I'm on Facebook. I say, well, what is this? It's just because I'm mixing with young people. Yeah. Now I'm getting to know these things. And social media right now is uh, yes. what is talking. Yeah. On social media, I'm, I do business mostly on social media. Yeah. Social media now. now. Okay. Mm. Um, a, a follow up question with this Does art pay? Uh, I know this is a very. <laughs> It may be a silly question, but I, there's so many people who wonder, people even who maybe who want to do it as a profession, but they're scared. Yeah. Will I be able to support myself, support my family? Yeah. So yeah, does art I'm, pay? My bank manager, when he sees me, he's like, ah. <laughs> yeah. um, art, it can pay. How many hours you put in is how many, how, how, how many hours you'll get out and how much you'll get out. If you're doing it part-time, yeah. The, the earnings will be part-time, meager. And there's a, the guy who puts full-time in learning how to budget also. Mm. Also learning how to budget, living within your means is very important. But it pays also. It I've, I've not done anything else. Apart from helping teachers here yeah, so I can get in instant income. Yeah. Portraits are also like instant. You can get money, but you need to know how to budget. Yeah. And then, from my experience, this is not I went to school to learn this. Mm -hmm. Every three years, things usually shake up a bit. You have people who are coming from college who have been studying you. Yeah. And they become your competition. Yes. And then also people who have been working with you, they work mostly three years, three years, three years, three years, and then they, they push on. Mm. So every three years, you need to know how to... To, to, to change a bit. To be more, to be still yeah. remain relevant, yes. interesting. And it can be just as little as changing your colors mm. or your subject as major as changing the size of the canvas. But you need to change something. You get a block sometimes. 
Yeah. And you need to walk around, fellowship with other artists. If you get saved, you, get, you go to fellowship. Yeah. So again, you become an artist, look for them. It's easy these days, you go online, how artists live, American artists. Go. Yeah. When, we, when I was starting out, you had to go to the library. And then if you can't borrow the book, you roll the page and you go with it at home. You reach at home, you forget it in the pocket, it is fully <laughs> worth. So, yeah, we had to do things like that to survive. But you need to get inspired. Artists are inspired by their surroundings. Nothing comes from nowhere. Yeah. Sometimes it's the food you eat, the people you talk to. There's no use being in campus doing fine art. When you get out of campus, you just go in Bangaiza with Mogoka guys or for selling other things. Yeah. If you go Mogoka, go do agriculture. So if you are with artists, you're doing art, walk around where the artists are. Find out all the studios, exhibition spaces, and out of it. Before even you get out of campus. Before you, it's, it's actually right now we are ad advised very much to like start looking for what you want to do before even you very, finish very university. Early, very early. Because there is a kid who's younger than you who's been taken to these places. Yeah. Working with these materials. Woku, woku, you're still in campus and you don't know some materials. Mm. This kid is already is, is in front of you. Knowing Very all these much. things. So you should know which direction you're going. Look for what you need. Don't be shy at me, I'm an artist. No, 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 you just say I'm an artist. Be proud of it. Yeah. And then work hard. Work hard. There's no other shortcut. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you so much. If I may ask again, um, how are you able to. Because you have so much going. You have the school, you have the studio, um, the children you're helping. Uh, how do you manage to put everybody around you in place and like just oh. manage everything and everybody around you? I think I'm just stumbling, on, stumbling along, you know, knowing how to handle people. Yeah. Like when I opened the studio and people started coming in, when I'm teaching them, I also became a social worker, mm -hmm. which I did not think. Because you leave the studio, you close the studio, and midnight you're being called by the police. They found one of your artists holding some wood and some paint. Oh. They think it's something bad, you have to go to the police station. Or the one becomes sick, spend the whole night in hospital with them. So it, I'm just stumbling along. But if you're working with people who are passionate, yeah. within three weeks, you start knowing who, who you can depend on, who can be there always. Within three weeks, it's not, it's not hard to know. Yeah. There are those who just come because they want to hang around. There are those who come because I'm a man, go and do something. Mm. And then there's the one who comes with the passion. And these people, they've never done art, but they have your passion and interest. Yeah. Mm. Your interest has to be there. The interest has to be there. The person who comes in November, there are people who come November, October, November, because they think they can sell something for Christmas. Oh, and then from January, <laughs> you don't see them, those ones you forget about them. Oh, they come with their, their paintings, they come with that. their painting, or they left the painting last December. Do you help, uh, do you help artists like uh, sell their art? I show them where to sell, so they come around that time. Yeah, they, they know come, it's somebody <laughs> come with 20 paintings in December. They want to sell. I say, Where have you been all? We yeah. start selling in December, we start selling in January, true. So the December people come, I saw the painting, I saw the painting, yeah. But you come like it's a week to December, uh, you are out, Kabisa. That's just a bit yeah. funny, by the way. Yeah, and they have been doing that for years. I come and Miyaka Zinanda. We, we tell them you used to be very good. Yeah. Very I remember good. us talking a bit about instant gratification, yes. and this is literally it. Yeah. People want now, paint today, sell it today. Yeah. I want to paint yeah. today, sell yeah. today. Yeah. <laughs> and I have paintings which are 20 years old. Wow. Yeah. I have sketches. I have sketches from a long time ago. I can show you an example of this one. The sketch I did was about 10 years old. And it was just people going to church. So I was working on it recently, and a client saw, he said, can you change this to become my story? So I've just redone it, changed them a bit, squeezed them together. When I was younger, I used to spread the people more so that yes. can Now I usually push them together to create a compact composition. And by the way, please, if I can, please tell us just a little bit about this painting. It looks like it's a uh, women. Yeah. They are so the happy. original one, yeah. I did it when I was living in Kikuyu, the sketch, you know, on a Sunday. And they were going to church, they had nice fancy dresses, yeah. and then they were all holding Bibles. But for my clients, she said, mm -hmm. she said she wanted a 
looks good like a women together, have friends, we go out together. Can you change to that? And then I made them now look like they're dancing. They were walking in there. Yeah. That's so it, it's a 12 year old idea. You put down the idea because once it's gone, it will never come back. Yeah. I know musicians who tell me, this song, I wrote it when I was starting. I tried to greet somebody, they ignored me. I felt bad, I wrote the song. Yeah. But now I'm famous, I greet everybody. Everybody greets me. Everybody greets me. Yeah. So even for artists, you see an idea, you have an idea, immediately put it down, sketch it or write it. Yeah. 20 years later, it's the one that can make you. I, you don't know how that really like resonates because um, so many people, people even who write poems, yes. write music, mm. you're told even if it's in the middle of the night, yes. you're almost falling asleep and a line comes, yeah. wake up, write okay. it down. Myself, mm. I've been caught up in this a lot when I have something really, really nice that I would like to write, yes. but then in the morning I forgot and it's gone. Once it's gone, it's, it's gone. gone. For me. Even me sometimes I feel, wow. And that's why, like, camera people, people work with camera, they're always there snapping. Because something happens, it will not be the same. It's not going to be the same. So the idea when it comes to the head, but I have a wall where sometimes I just write ideas. That's really nice. And you don't know when. You don't know when. I like cars, drawing cars. I did not know one day I'm going to use them in paintings until COVID. And I'm walking around Rocker and I'm seeing all these cars parked, and people opened boots selling things. Yeah. I said, that's the connection. I like to draw cars. Now I can put the mamamboga in the cars. So I have a series called Gariki Banda. Gariki Banda. Yes. And some of the cars are from Kitambo and I was very small. Guys, we have so, so, mm -hmm. so, so much to talk about. Art is an amazing subject. Art is that is Im embedded in our lives, guys. So mm -hmm. please stay tuned. We have still so much to give you, still so much to talk about. I am so happy with our guest for today. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. I cannot begin to express how wonderful his art is. Patrick, thank you so, so much. Guys, catch us up and um, remember to text us on our SMS line. That is at um, 21144. And also check us up on our social medias. Um, you can text us, tell us how your day is, tell us how your week is going, how is everything, guys, um, on our social media at GBS TV Africa. And you can also text us on our SMS Hello. line. That is at 21144. Thank you so much. and we are back you're welcome you're welcome again and this is gbs tv and you are watching the greatest the best art club show in east africa and i am here with my guest uh patrick and we have been talking about um art we've been talking about his paintings we've been talking about things that he goes through um his journey as an artist and it's just so much people it's so much to learn it's so much information and tune in i'm sure you will have a lot of information um you can also like because you cannot get the entire um interview on tv so you can get it on our youtube channel that is at gbs tv africa and also get the snippets of you know what's happening behind the scenes and also a lot of what we will talk about that's not going to be on TV. Thank you so much, guys, and tune in. Uh, Patrick, thank you again mm -hmm. for being here. I am in love with your art. I love the colors. I thank love you. the 
significance of women, the African woman, the features. Mm -hmm. There's so much to look at and it's just really, really nice. Um, we were going on with our interview and Patrick was telling us a lot about the problems that he faces. And I just wanted to ask you another thing. Do you have roadblocks in your journey that um, could be defined as things that maybe make you a bit slower or hinder you from being the artist you want to become? Yeah. yeah. I think the main thing people think is finances. Yeah. Um, when you're starting out, finances is always a problem. True. But I usually say when artists start without finances, they become very creative in using other materials. Mm. The discovering a material in the hardware, which is half price in the art shop, which can still do the same job. So again, that one comes from just talking to other people, working under somebody, you can see things like that. Yeah. But I think the most thing that can hinder you is your relations and people around you. There are people who come into your life and just cause chaos. Mm. and creativity goes away. Mm. There are those who come, spend a whole day with you, give you nothing but inspire you. So again, so you look for people who inspire you deliberately. Go and sit with somebody who can inspire you, make you dream. Okay? You will sleep hungry, but you're okay. Yeah. The ones who come and just disappear, dis you know, just destroy everything. Um, you avoid them. Yeah. And they come in different angles. Come, come as artists and then they just start messing up. Some feel that you're, you're taking, you know, they feel like jealousy and they want to just bring you down for no reason. Um, so choose people, choose mm -hmm. them carefully. Some do it without knowing also. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't advise in starting a family very, very early, but it's also not bad if you have another means to support. Mm. Because when you're starting to think about feeding, creativity can also go. True. You want to be creative and very relaxed. I do not subscribe to people taking something to be creative. You mm. know, like some people do funny things. When you're sober and creative, it's much better. Because you can be creative anywhere. But if you need something, to stimulate you to become creative. Yeah. When it's not there, it's not you're there. not creative. Okay? So being creative, being around the environment that makes you be creative. Because when the client comes, they will not wait. Yeah. Is it, do you have or you don't have? And they go. They go to another person. So those are the things that can bring you down, can just block you. And then there's a normal block. In the fine art, we call it the big doubt. Mm. You look at your paintings and then you go like, oh, why am I doing this? Yeah. This painting has been here for years. I don't know what it is. So you feel like you have a big doubt. It's the writers coming with the block. I, mean, I know writers who've gone block for 30 years. Just imagine you're a painter and you have all these paintings. You know, so what I do, I advise, go and look for the artist. And I'll fellowship. Go and fellowship with the artists. Go and look at them. Uh, see their studios and you discover you're all the same. Yeah. And in the process, you start getting creative. Creativity comes like, let's talk about the weather. It's very cold, it's very cold. And then somebody comes in, oh, it's, do you think it's colder than where I'm coming from? Yeah, I'm in Canada and it's cold and snow. So, snow is white. Oh, yeah, 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 white. But the way, which white do you use in your painting? Yeah. So creativity can come from just conversation. Conversation happen a pali, happen a pali. Maximize the time you're creative when you're thinking of creation. So if you, if you go to Uru Park and you look at the clouds and you see things there, give time for that. Yeah. Go there, look at the clouds, you see things, and then you draw them and come and paint them. Don't forget where you came from. The famous writer who used to write about drunk people in the Matatu at night because he was always late, taking the last Matatu, he gets enough money to buy a car and then he says he's not creative anymore because he's always driving at home to protect for God. Uh. He's forgotten where the stories came from. So he should leave the car, go back to the Matatu and write again. See the people. Or while he's driving, try and look at different drivers. Because they'll tell you if you buy a bicycle, 
you start meeting people with bicycles. Yes. You know each other. Yeah. You buy a motorbike, you know. So you buy a car, look at them. Remember where your creativity came from. So if you see me in Kikomba, in Kangemi, mm. in Kikui Market, mm. squeezing my eyes like this, I'm just going back to where I came from. Yeah. Looking at the light and shadow, the postures, the poses. People don't walk the way by in Asema. People have their own beat. They stand in their own styles. You put it in the painting, it becomes more interesting. Yeah. You just don't draw robots like this. True. Okay? Yeah. So those are things that can make you not become creative. Because the finances, this is the worst, is the worst. Sometimes you go through things and you say, what? Mm. Mm. Is it even, uh, yeah, you, tend, you start asking yourself, is, is it mm. even, should I even do this? So you feel like, oh. And then maybe you just go somewhere and somebody says, I know you, you painted with us when I was like, you say, okay, that inspires you again. Yeah. So look for your inspiration. Be true to yourself. Yeah. Mm. That's when you're down, mm -hmm. blocked, Nini, don't worry, yeah, because you're already down. If you have to go to Zaidi, that means we just bury you. So you just wait for the coming up. It's coming. Yeah. But be active. Go and volunteer. Mix with the artists. I've done so many volunteer things, because sometimes I go like, wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But you just volunteer. You volunteer in, uh, you used to go somewhere in Madari, and I walk all the way to South B. Wow. Yeah, but when you reach home, you, see, you know what you interacted with, you start seeing ideas, you saw people washing clothes, you saw people doing this. This is what in your paintings. Mm. You just sketch them, sketch them, sketch them. Yeah, that's so true. Like, Bali. like this one, you'll see her in another painting one day. This is so, so yeah. beautiful. I and it's, it's very simple. It's just uh, light and shadow. The canvas was blue. And then I just work with light and shadow. And where the shadow is, it's mostly the blue again remains. And then texture mm. also. Yeah, the the, texture. Uh, yeah, there's so much texture yeah. in this picture. The texture makes it more alive. It's so nice. Yeah. You see? Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so again, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, uh, I've resonated with a lot of what you've said right now. Mm. And about an artist having uh, getting those creative juices, an artist not being stressed, an artist... Uh, having proper planning mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people feel and think that being an artist is being a bit careless being an artist is being a bit raggedy <laughs> being an artist is not having everything put together but I don't feel it's like that uh, like you said right now um, an artist should at least be kume jipanga, kama ni familia, at least get to your family when you're prepared mm -hmm. so that that family doesn't start draining you of all your energies yes. and you don't have that creativity going. And also when you said about um, the man who used to travel with the matatus mm -hmm. all the time, sasa mm akapata -hmm. gari, so he didn't have their stories anymore. Yes. Um, do you feel like uh, people should know that Art and creativity is everywhere. You just have to yeah. look for it. It's everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. yeah. Uh, when you're going for a date, you put on your best. But when you're going to Gombana that day, you just go like that. Yeah. So that's art. You already your dressing is showing. Uh, colors. Uh, politicians, police, they have very dark colors. And, and, and in it, uh, the colors are dark. The, to create seriousness. Cindy. Yeah. And then um, the streets, the way people dress in the streets, it's all creativity. The guy going to the office, the mamamboga, they all come with their attire. For many artists, they look crafty because most of them will think, I'm going to paint, what I, I dress something that has really got paint. Mm. So that you can get Zeka, no problem. Yeah. Instead of going always with a new dress. And yeah. Like, my clothes, within one hour, I'll make Queen Arangi. Okay. Um, what else happens? Um, you want to paint a flower. It takes you like uh, about um, five, six, seven drawings to get the right one. It takes you about um, hundred sketches mm. just to come up with a simple painting. Creativity is everywhere. Everywhere what we do, kids. So, so like me, I have a child small and she's part of my creativity now 
my timings. Um, uh, I put her in the class sometimes. Yeah. When she was very, very, very small. And you see her starting to pick up things. And then I noticed the paintings I've done that time as good children also. Mm. When my mom was very sick, she went through chemo. Nini. I didn't realize until one student who was studying my work said, there's a period you've painted many people praying. Dull scenes and things. And then it goes, oh, it's the time my mom oh. was sick. I didn't even realize it. It runs around with us everywhere. Yeah. You can't run away from it. You will never run away from it. Sometimes even psychologically, you just put it into your work even without yes. work. It's like they say when a, an the, artist is heartbroken, maybe. You can see it. You, you see and it. And you, you should learn how to use that heartbrokenness and that anger to channel it into art. Yeah. It, it will make you survive. Because I know people who come for therapy, through, I teach them because of something like that. But it's my job. So I cannot take that therapy again. But I just learn to use that anger and annoyance to create other types of work. Yeah. I put that energy there. They say if you don't have that anger when your heart broken, you need to have it so that you can improve yourself. You come from that and say, mm. and you use it in your art pieces. It pushes you. Yes. Yeah. So there are, there are some types of pieces I'm doing right now, pieces of cloth I put on. And it's a form of anger, but also I'm working with some kids who don't have materials. And sometimes I can go there to one of my pieces, we work. Now I'm trying to put them in my work also. Yeah. Yeah. You take all that in, you channel it, and then you put it on a canvas, on a song. It becomes therapy. You're actually therapy every day. Yeah. Which I find for me, it's, I'm lucky. I know an accountant who doesn't know what to do. And he's going through a heartbreak or he's going through problems. He's he does not know how to release it. He doesn't know kabisa kabisa. Yeah, he's, he's, he's even destroying himself. Yeah. That's so, so true. Mm. Guys, mm. I hope you are hearing this. I hope you are picking up, even though this is entertainment and it's so fun to be here. Please also pick up the small, 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 small bits of information and advice that you hear here. And... He has been working as an artist for more than 20 years, guys. So that's a lot of time to know about the industry, to know what is wrong, what is right. And I feel like he's talked about a lot of things that are very, very um, helpful right now for the young people especially. And because this entire segment will not be able to be on live TV, guys, you can also go and watch us on our YouTube. On YouTube, you're going to get the entire, entire interview without any cuts. So at least you can see um, the ad or every advice that he gives. You can get something from this. So make sure you go and check us up on our, our YouTube channel at GBS TV Africa. You can get the entire full interview there. And I hope... Guys, you will learn a lot from this today. Uh, thank you so much. You can also um, uh, reach us on our SMS line that is at 21144 and on our socials that is at GBS TV Africa. Stay tuned. <laughs> Everywhere, GBS. 
Hello, hello, good people. I hope you're doing okay. I am your host, Val Wanyoike, and I hope you're doing all right. It's a bit cold. I hope you're keeping warm, and I hope your energies are high. It's Saturday. I hope your Saturday is Saturdaying, and I hope your weekend is going to be a very, very good one. Um, we are back here. You are watching GBS TV, and this is your favorite art club show in East Africa. In East Africa. Um, we had a guest. We still have a guest here in studio. Patrick and he's an amazing amazing artist they call him the godfather of art I love his paintings his art is amazing uh, the structures of his paintings it's just I feel like it it takes Africa and it shows you the real carves of an Africa woman and the paintings just speak a lot there's one right behind me and it's really really pretty I hope you can see it guys uh, so in this segment, we're going to be having a few games to play, and I'm going to be playing them, playing them with Patrick. And, you know, guys, tune in and enjoy. And also catch us up on our social medias at GBS TV Africa. You can text us on our line. That is at 21144. Again, text us on our SMS line. That is at 21144. We have this game, Patrick. Yep. Uh, it's called the uh, Ruffles. <laughs> so you just pick <laughs> you just pick one and then you'll give it to me and then I'm gonna ask you the question look that for, you I look for the small one. Yeah, just <laughs> the small one is the one that you think is not gonna have a mighty yeah, mighty this is a big one there. Ah yeah, let's see. So what happens here guys is Patrick picks the paper just Random. randomly. He just picks it randomly and then just gives it to me and I'm gonna see what's written on here and ask him the question. So let's see. Hi, the question, what wouldn't you do without? I think they are saying in life, what wouldn't you do without? Oh, something I, I can't live without. Something that you can't live without. One is people. People, people around me because I paint people. Um, people give you your name. People bury you. People are the ones who give you nicknames, you know, validate you. Yeah. I think people is my main, main. And then chapati, of course. Imagine a world without <laughs> chapati. <laughs> You're a chapati fan. Oh, well, yes, yes. Uh, in America, I looked for three weeks to get chapati. I hear when people travel there, yeah. sometimes they even put like ugali packets in yes, their suitcases. Yes, yes. Like it's a real thing. I tried to cook ugali, but the fire brigade came. So chapati is my next option. Are you kidding? Yeah, because the swing and the smoke <laughs> is going to the detector. And then, <laughs> I, never, I didn't even notice. I thought it's somewhere in the flat there. And then I saw them. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. But I think people, 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 people. Yeah. So for you, it's people. I would think uh, you would even say air. Yeah. No, because air is there. Air yeah. is free of charge. <laughs> um, I thought by now I would have stopped painting people. Because I started people everywhere. But the urge becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. I can go somewhere and see the light, the way that it falls on somebody, and I want to paint it. Yeah. See the way they have dressed, and I want to paint it. You know? um, I was taken once to a church, and the way people were praying, and you know, I, I had a piece of paper, and I started drawing, they threw me out. Oh. Yeah, because it's time to pray. You know I mean? I'm just drawing people. Down. And you are just drawing people. I'm seeing nice paintings, you know, postures, dynamics, and things like that. Okay. Mm. Ah, yeah. Here we go. So now it's me to ask you. So I, yeah, so I think yeah, now it's for you to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> what is your strongest memory of your childhood? Whoa. Hey, that's a deep question. This is deep. Anything? I can answer it, mine. You can answer? Yeah. Well, you can tell us. I think mine is uh, yeah, in school painting. Painting? Yeah, it's when I was very small, Loreto Mombasa. Those are the times I remember more. You have like a you have like a memory of it because you. of the the school has got also paintings a lot, and then I wasn't good in no not that I wasn't good in sports mm. because I was too heavy. They thought I wasn't good in sports. Yeah, but in painting and drawing, ah, they used to just give him, call him. Yeah, yeah. So that, that I can remember, and in Mombasa, especially Mombasa. That's just near the ferry down yeah. there. I can remember all those things. Oh my goodness. Yeah, even now when I'm with Nairobi, I just go and sit there and look at the ferry and the people. Mombasa has a type of 
tranquility yes. about it. If I stay there for three days, it takes me six days to recover. Oh <laughs> my I mean, goodness. Um, um, I, would, I think I would say my memory as a child was just time sitting with my mother and her like giving me stories mm -hmm. and like telling me about her, herself, life, yeah. joking. We used to laugh. I used, even now I still laugh a lot with my mother, but I think those are the most it's memorable times Yeah, when we are just like sitting and laughing and she's telling yeah, me. Sometimes just, I just take my daughter and we, yeah. go somewhere. we can go to Mombasa. Yeah. And the whole day we'll sit just one spot. She'll play, come back, play. And then later on, she'll tell me about that. That's really, you really know, fantastic. When that thing was happening, like, what? You don't remember it? where Mombasa? You know, and then you're like, <laughs> oh, so you remember? Of course. She can even remind me where she was disturbing me, crying for no reason. Oh, that's so nice. So kids and memories. And then also don't promise you will come to school and you don't come. Kids remember. Yeah. There's a guy working KCB. He told me, you know, when you told us you were coming, I didn't sleep the whole night. I just waited for you to come. Oh, and then you don't come. And then imagine how good. They remember. Mm. Ah, yeah. no, Another one you. for you? Yes. Oh, this is me. This is no, no, oh, no, no, no. This is me. This is me. No, I hope you oh, didn't yeah, see I it. Oh, I give you. Yeah, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't opened it. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, this one says, what is your scariest experience? Scariest experience? Yeah, what is your scariest experience? And I realized it at that time. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Many. Yeah. Which there is one talking? which I did not realize. Mm -hmm. So you're coming to Charles de Gaulle in Paris. You're landing with the plane, Kenya Airways. And then it goes up again. It comes down and then up again. Wait. Three times. Okay. The plane. Yeah. It's landing and then going it's, up. It's almost coming down and then it goes. Three times. And me, I'm like, wow, we are going three times round. You know me, I'm saying, how says there? I'm happy. We are going three times. You need Rao. And then they change and say we are going to the uh, small airport, I think, Oli. Mm -hmm. Because this side is too much fog. Oh, you okay. can't land. I Me, mean, I wasn't thinking that way. I Me, mean, I was just happy. Oh. So we go to this <laughs> other airport, we land. <laughs> and when people are coming out, is when I'm seeing people who are sweating. Some people were praying. There was a minister sitting in first class. He was being carried out. <gasps> and then I, I oh, what's wrong? Say, the plane couldn't land. You didn't realize? Hey, me, I was just happy. I'm you, going you are. Around. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just seeing the trees. I'm seeing the mist. I'm seeing you all. aren't asking where, where, are we, where are we going so many no, times? No, no, me. I, and then they announce you are going to another airport. You'll be given some money f to continue back to where you're going. I mean, I was happy. But it's only later on <laughs> I was told the plane couldn't land. That's why you're seeing some people fainted. Oh, my goodness. So, but something scary. Hey, I know, I've been scary. through so many things. That, that's, that's scary, but you, uh, you are yeah. just happy you are going to land in another island. Africa, Japan, and Deg is coming. And it, it became like an experience, you know. Because I had been to a smaller plane, like people were in the EV. I was a bit shocked. People were there praying and you, you didn't know what was going on. I didn't realize. People were there. It's when you said the minister was being taken yeah, out. Yeah, he was being carried. <laughs> I said, okay, well, okay. Next time, okay, I'll try and pay more attention. <laughs> but flights, flight, flights could <laughs> be scary. Yeah. I, like, even when there's that turbulence, mm. I get so scared. Yes. So yeah. I, don't even, I don't even think I would. So I think I would be the one being taken out. But here, okay, in Nairobi, I think I've been in situations, Usiku, you meet tags. Yes. No, no, watch it. Oh, don't you raji. Talk a bit up. For real? Yes, it has happened to me like that. It has happened like that. Sometimes being just a, 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 an artist or I don't know they how remember, you call it, uh, it, it helps. Peter, Peter, Araka, Peter. And then they go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. That's mm. so funny, by the way. But so you, many things can frighten you. Yeah, me. but you, uh, you like learn to just go on. You just leave. Yeah, Try you just leave. leave. Uh, today I had that we have three days only in our lives. We have three breaths, three days. Uh, you know yesterday, today, tomorrow, to know about it. Yeah. You breathe this minute, you breathe now, you don't know if you breathe the next minute. Sure. So just leave, no issue too. It's only 
the creator who knows when your case should have Yeah, when is the time? And I think in my life I've been just living like that, you know. I went through a list of things I wanted to do sometime. I was some turbulence. And I noticed Nimeanda through Zote. Mm -hmm. I had written, I want to go to New York, I want to go to Paris, I want to paint, do an exhibition here. I have done most of those things. Wow. But I did not realize because I was just working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I told you, I can get a three-year-old kid I'm working with. Two weeks, they invite me to another country to teach. Um, I'm working with charcoal Lapa. I go to France, and it's charcoal workshop. They have the most expensive charcoal, and they don't know how to use it. And I mean, me to Nairobi, uh, teach them how to work with it. Wow. Yeah, and things like that. There's so many things happen. There's so many things mm. that happen. Mm. I really, really admire your life, by the way. And as you said, <laughs> sometimes you don't know yeah. the, 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 the challenges that you've actually gone through and come out yes. victorious yes. until you like start looking and say, hey, mm. by the way, I went through this and I yes. passed. I went through this and I yeah. conquered. And at that time, it's so hard. And you start to pray, you know, it's a god of funny. Yeah. Yeah. And then you discover mm. he's doing it at the right time. Okay. After some time to know things start happening. And but you who fikiri is the one is the one you were praying for that. Mm. So no, when you sit down but then you say, okay, actually an answer could be funny sasa. See the time. It wasn't the right time. It wasn't the right time. This is the time. Mm. There are paintings, uh, materials I've used after seeing them after ten years. When I went to America, I felt I went too late. Because I saw many in the workshop, they had material. They had a machine can cut rock, you can cut metal. Wow. Could be it was the right time to go because now I could do complicated designs. Yeah. You, you, you went if I had gone younger, I would have done very simple designs. True. Mm. True. Mm. I, I think now it's my turn. You can ask okay. me. I really like how you answer your questions. You have so much um, information to like divulge and digest to people. And I usually say I don't thing. read these things, Sana. It's just experience them. It's exp experience mm. is the best teacher, they say. What do you dislike about art in this world? Mm. Hey. <laughs> hey, art is... Hey. I wish this question would have been posed to you, but okay, let me just try. I would also like you to answer this okay. question. Okay, I can answer also. Mm. Um, I think the one thing that I really don't like about art right now is um, if you go to, like... A sphere where, it, let's say in this art, it's paintings, yes? Mm -hmm. In this other part, it's sculptures. Sculpture. Uh, so let's say if you go into painting, I'll feel like if you want to try something a bit outside of the box, some people will feel like you're trying to change mm -hmm. whatever it is that you found there. Uh, and I believe that art should be explored, even if you want to put that sculpted thing you put it and stick it on a painting i feel like if you want to do that and it's original you can't do that but to a point sometimes um artists get to a place where i would say the restrictions may come uh, not every time but there's a bit of restrictions sometimes being put in a box being know, put in a box or typecasted you know like some actors have to be put in yes okay, talk, people talk back yeah so if you're like a sculptor it's very hard for you to delve into something else uh, that you can give actually your attention to for me what i don't like is it you can't hide your feelings it just comes out in the painting oh. no people will just notice People will notice I don't give fun Oh my God, that's so true. Yes, that's what I don't like about it. You are, people analyze it and then they start knowing you. Okay? And then physically, I just don't like washing the brushes. <laughs> uh, who, wash who, washes, brush? who washes uh, your brushes? I try very hard, but even in the studio when there are many, <laughs> you see them, they just take a new one, a new one. It's a new one. So that's part of art which is very hard, but you need to know how to do it if you're an artist. Yeah. Especially if you're managing a studio, you need to know that. You need to know. You know that. Apo akuna hierarchy at window mkubwa. Yeah. No, you just have to wash. We, 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 you can try out the the one that you, you like just bring children. You can make them feel like, oh, when you do something, you need to clean after yourself. You will be surprised. Really? Akuna. Ndambi wa to come early tomorrow to wash the studio. Water wa techelewa. Unajua? I was like like this and 
So you don't tell them, yes, you could have said, let's watch the stream. Yes, mm. yes. Una, so, you just make it like a fun event. Yes. There's always something somebody attack fun. Okay, thank mm. you so, so much for this. I <laughs> have welcome. really, 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 really enjoyed this interview. Thank I you. really um, love the way you talk, the way you express yourself. You mm. really are an artist. Thank you. And I feel like you have so many words. Even though you were given the talent that most were not, that is putting your words into in, in paintings mm. and pictures. Mm. Um, I also feel like you have a very um, good uh, vocal range and you <laughs> talk really well. When you're standing in front of the class, yes. sometimes you need to shout. You need to. Yes. And you need to be very, very assertive. If you notice the class is becoming more noisy, they are getting bored. Yeah. So sometimes you just need to shout on top of them or make the class interesting. You know. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Uh, I really, 20 really minutes in a class, they start losing interest. Yeah. You bring something else. Something to jolt them a bit. Yes. yes That's really that's good. good. I'm really, really happy to have you mm -hmm. here. Thank you. Um, welcome to the Art Club show. We are really, really happy, happy to, to have you here. here. Happy to be here. Thank you. Mm. We are really happy to have you here. We are happy that you came. Mm. We are happy that you sat with us and we talked to all these people. And I'm sure people are going to get um, a lot of information from this. And people who are who want to become artists in future, there's a lot that you've yeah. said to us today that yeah. can really um, resonate with them. Yeah. Um, as we close this up, I would like you to just uh, give a word to the youth and artists that are coming up. Okay. And just uh, something simple that they can follow, at least as an artist, to remain um, very... In, um, focused with you. Focused, art, yeah. yes, all of that. I think, first I would talk to the parents and the guardians eh? if you see the a child going into a certain direction in the creative industry mm -hmm. give them a chance also you never know what in the future that will make the child you know it can become something important yeah allow them to be kids and play rap scratch you know everything maybe in future it can help them and discipline yes, how, and how discipline. can they remain disciplined yeah, yeah. just show them that there's a time to do this, there's a time to sleep, and there's a time to play. Mm -hmm. For young artists, discipline. Mm -hmm. Make a timetable when you're painting, when you're sleeping, when you're playing. Don't inter mix the two. Don't do a painting because of a certain market. Yeah. You just paint something that reduces your heart feels good. Okay? Yeah. And somebody else somewhere out there will feel like you. Have your working hours. Me, I know artists work at night. And their clients call them at night. And they meet at night and they sell at night. Not when you sell a painting, so you take a holiday mm. for three <laughs> weeks. And then you come back feeling like Malaysia. It's the December. I know people are only after three weeks. I, mean, I was sick. No, I was having fun in Mombasa on Monaco Facebook. So, have your timing. People will know your timing and call. I've had people, somebody's coming from Johannesburg. Hey, I'll be there in four hours. And then I'm off to Europe. We meet at GKI. And you finger the painting, you go to GKI. Wow. We've even gone once without fare to Tembea Pakoku. And the client was there, you got your money and you came back. Mm. At midnight, one o'clock. When you want to get the money, you yeah. can get the money. So have your timings. People know... This artist works at these hours and deals business these hours. Mm. That is very important. Just creativity eco killer mali. Avoid taking pictures from the internet. Yeah. See look at them. My teacher um, at Poly told me, get those magazines. Angalia is on my pictures are uh, creative things, nini. Go through the page without reading. Angalia to picture turn, turn, turn. Put it a candle, and then after a week, now you can read. You will discover some of the pictures gave you better stories because you did not read about them. You just looked, it inspired you. You looked, it inspired you. But when you read, now the artists are Kushika. Yeah. So just look, look, Kwanzaa, and then get inspired. Pinterest, no. <laughs> if you have to go to Pinterest, <laughs> take three or four, five pictures and put them together. Pinterest. Yeah, because now copyright is everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah, I've seen calls. 
somebody in your studio drew a painting of mine or a picture of me or a picture of my jacket, the one I painted, why? So be careful now. you. Just, if you want to draw lions, they don't have to lions. Go and look for the lions in Coco Park. You save some money, you go and go. Mm. With a funny phone, pick a picture of Rudy at, at an orphanage. Don't go to the internet. You're looking at the lion from somebody else's eye. No. True. Go and look for yourself. And that's why I'm talking to you at all. I'm just doing it. I've been out of town for some time because of COVID. And mm -hmm. then I went back to, if you go Moyavi, Tomboya Street, you've seen the way people want to know who's a Vitu. Yeah. I go like, why? You could have a bad one. Yeah, it has always been there. But because I was away, now I come back and I'm seeing again Mama Boga Pale, Mama Kibanda Pale, Mutu Anjugu, Makanga Naruka. There is a bit happening there from morning package Yeah. Go and look for that inspiration. I'm the artist. Go and look. And if you have a child who has an idea, an attack artist, mm. it's better than a child at a university doing something they don't like. True. Who you already have set. Attacking the university could set. Who mm. mingina na kwambia, ngoja ni kimaliza, I will decide that's the worst type of person to go on. True. Mm. So even, I think that's the only I can tell them. And then just enjoy your life, no? Enjoy, yeah. See, don't take it too serious, too serious. Yeah, me Live one day at me a time. I've been, uh, been in airport security too, I've been in airport security too, I've been in airport because I look funny. Mm. And then a group of kids still has come, working in Kondege. They come and greet me, they, they, they jump over me, and then they go in. And then the pilot comes out mm. and asks me, why did the kids jump at you? Who are you to them? I say, I'm, I'm the art teacher, I just go there to teach her. Yeah, but they seem to like you. They didn't even, uh, they're not afraid of the dog. So, yeah, and then he came and puts me in first class. Yeah, oh wow. You know, like, oh, cool. you've gone to first class, eh, Lege? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Legs pace. And there's somebody there too. You want something? Mm -hmm. really so, things like that happen, you know. Take your life easy, poly poly. Yeah. Do good. Watch it. Kikuja good. Kikuja mbaya. Try and do good. Mm. I know it is very hard. It is. It is very hard to panga vitu. But just try and do your best, Kabisa. Um, I've been to a place in the US and I painted I did a long time ago. Yeah. And half of it I took one with Maliza. And the person I knew, I'm like, yeah, you see this part, Malik, my sketch, Manini. That is the best part. What's your name, my paint? I don't know how to do Maliza. But you know, you the best part. You see? So just do good. Now relax your life to go better. Okay. Mm. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much again for being here today, for coming, for talking to us. I feel like this interview has been both entertaining and okay. we've also learned so, so much. Mm -hmm. Also about um, how to grow as an artist, how to remain responsible um, and all of that. I really have enjoyed this conversation. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you again. Thank, thank you for having me around. Welcome again mm -hmm. for visiting um, Arts Club. And guys, this is the end of our show. But remember, you can still uh, watch our content. You can still go and catch us up on our social media. That is at GBS TV Africa. Go watch uh, the entire um, interview that does not have any cuts at GBS TV Africa on YouTube. And thank you so much for chilling with us. Thank you so much for watching. And stay tuned. Uh, catch us on, on our social media, GBS TV, and SMS us on our line. That is at 21144. Um, SMS us on our line. That is at 21144. Thank you so much. Cheers. Yeah, yeah.